What's up, everybody? This is LB The Realist with Surrealistic Studios. Surreal news, surreal at night, where the real is surreal. I brought you guys a story. Well, not a story. I mean, it's a story, but a segment about how Joe Biden was withdrawing troops from Afghanistan. And, um... It's not going so well. It's not going so well. And I'm reading the news reports and some people are reporting that he sent a thousand more troops to Afghanistan to help with the uh, withdrawal. Um, I'm, I'm hearing some reports that he sent 3000 troops. I'm hearing another uh, more reports that say 5000 troops. So it's unclear just how many troops were supposed to be left there in Afghanistan. It's unclear how many troops the administration sent back to Afghanistan to help with, with the withdrawal from the uh, airport. Now, the latest news is that they were able to get everybody safely out for a complete withdrawal, but... It's crazy because, you know, in the news they've been talking about, you know, the Taliban has been taking over uh, Afghanistan and, and taking over cities. And basically they've taken over, I believe they said 30 out of the 32 different cities or locations in Afghanistan. But another thing that they said was the Taliban is taking over all of these locations without even without even having to fight I don't understand what where is the Afghani military the Afghani police I mean where's the resistance think about it folks we've been in Afghanistan for 20 plus years we've wasted so much trillions of dollars we've wasted Thousands and thousands of lives. For what? For the Taliban to take back control in a week? So 20 plus years isn't worth a damn. Excuse me. It's not worth anything. 20 plus years for what? They got veterans asking... What, we, what were we there for? What did we waste our time for? What did my friends die for? And it's sad. It, it really... It irritates the F out of me. And it makes me... It makes me so sad that I'm getting angry as I think about it. Because not only do I have people in my family that are in the military people that were that were in the military my grandfather was in uh, uh vietnam one of the worst wars we've ever been to the one we lost and it looks like we lost the war in afghanistan 20 plus years for what for the taliban to take it back in a week and we have our veterans our soldiers our, our heroes asking you know why why did we even go? What was the point? And like I said, I got people in my family there in the military. And not only that, but my son Patrick has expressed interest in joining the military. And it's hard for me, it's hard for his mom to tell him or to, you know, try to talk him out of it because number one, she wanted to join the Air Force and she was she was uh, uh, hindered by certain situations that prevented her from going. So she has a, a feeling of regret in that aspect. So she doesn't want to tell him, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't do it because she was going to do it. That was about to be her life. So it seems kind of weird for her to go back and tell him he shouldn't do it. They know how I feel about the matter. I'm against it, but at the same time, if he has a clear plan and a clear exit strategy, then 
I can be for it, but it's not something that I can get excited about because I know the repercussions. And don't get me wrong, not everybody goes off to war and loses a limb or comes back with PTSD. You know, a lot of people get out the military and they actually live very well lives. You know, they're able to have their housing taken care of. And, you know, it's, 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 it is beneficial, I guess, if you know what you're doing and if you know, if you have an exit strategy. But for a lot of people out there who want to join the military, they just want to join because they feel as though they have nothing else to do. They want to join because they don't feel as if they have any other options for themselves. I wanted to join the military at one point in time. When I was 18, fresh out of high school, I was going to join the military. But a few things held me up. Number one, my dad. My dad talked me out of it. And I thank him to this day for it. At the time, I wanted to go because I didn't have any direction. I thought the military would give me direction and give me structure and give me, uh, you know, something that I could use for life, you know, discipline. And the military, I believe, does give you those things. But it can take so much more from you. And, um... So my dad talked me out of it and, uh, you know, I have this big tattoo on my neck too. My, my tattoo that says so real. This is actually the first tattoo I ever got. I only have two tats. It's this one right here. And I'll, <laughs> I'll leave it up to the imagination where my, where my other tattoo is. <laughs> I'm not going to say where I'm just going to say, I'm just not going to tell you, <laughs> but the point of that was to say that this tattoo saved me because in the military or if you try to become a police officer, they don't allow you to have tattoos that are visible. Now, I think it's different once you actually get in the military. I think there's a workaround in regards to that. I'm not sure. Somebody who's in the military, let me know in the comment section down below. But I know that when I was trying to sign up, when I was talking to a, recru a recruiter from the uh, Air Force, he told me that I couldn't have this tattoo and that would most likely hinder me because in your PE uniform, you know, it's like a shirt and some shorts. You can't show any tats. And of course, you know, this would be, this would be showing. I could be a security guard, but not in our nation's military. Go figure. Uh, and of course, you know, I, I got out of high school and I started getting into other stuff that made me chill out. We'll just say that it made me chill out more. I used to be very energetic and I got out of high school. I started chilling out more. I got more relaxed. I got more rebellious and I got more enlightened. And because of all those different things, all those factors that, you know, my dad and the tattoo, I did not join the military. And to this day, I'm grateful for all of those things. I'm grateful because I understand now that I'm not the military type of person. I thought I was, maybe I was at the time, but the person that I am now is very much against it. And especially, especially when I hear our veterans questioning why they were even there in the first place. Why were they in Afghanistan? Why are they in Iraq? Why did they risk their lives? Why did their friends give their lives? Why? What was the whole point? And to this day, nobody can give them a decent answer. The government is not giving them a decent answer. And unfortunately, when our soldiers go off to wars and conflicts, all they know is the guy or the girl standing right by their side. And that's all they care about. They just care about making it home to their families and, and the people around them taking care of them and making sure that they make it home to their families safely as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there's everything wrong with why we're there in the first place. And don't get me wrong. I, I, I think that I know that we do need a military. We need a military. But the way we're using our military, the way we're utilizing our soldiers is not beneficial to them or to our country. Or to our mental health. I mean, we got so many video games glorifying war and death and shooting people. 
And I'm not trying to be one of these PC guys. You know, I like a, a good video game as, next, as much as the next person. But when you really start digging into this and you really think about it, the, 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 the most popular video games are ones where you kill people, the ones where you shoot people with an automatic weapon or you blow them up or you're a gang member in a fictional city named Los Santos. They're supposed to be like Los Angeles and you're shooting rival gangs and you're killing hookers on the street. We have a serious mental issue. We have mental issues in this country. In this world where we glorify death and destruction and pain and suffering and I'm sick of it to the point where we have young men and women who actually want to join this system of oppression and death and American imperialism and it makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. You know, and this is where I say, if we want to change the world, we got to change ourselves first. We got to change the way we think and the way we feel because it starts with us. We're teaching the next generation by the things that we do and the things that we say. They're looking at us. And the next generation is going to be a byproduct of what we did in our collective actions in this generation. What are we going to leave behind? What are we going to teach them? How are they going to look at us? These things piss me off and they make me sad because there's real repercussions involved with this. I don't even want to say so many things that are on my mind in regards to, you know, my son going off to, to some war. My granddaughter having to grow up in a world without her father because of American imperialism, because we don't care about human lives, not their lives and not our lives. Our lives don't matter, remember? I see media pushing nonstop war. I see them manufacturing consent and doing anything in their power to make us really want to go back to Afghanistan. They really want us to want war. You ever heard that song by Cheap Trick? I want you to want me. That's what this feels like. It's like they want us to want it. That way they could turn it around on us. They, we can never blame the system. We can only blame ourselves. That's what they want. That's why they use us against each other. They divide, divide and conquer. Half of us want to go off to war. Half of us think that what the country is doing, what our government is doing, is justified. So meanwhile, Afghanistan is under the control of the Taliban in just a week. After 20 plus years, of war and death and destruction, nothing at all has come of it. And now it looks like we're gonna be going right back at some point. It looks like this will be the never ending war against terrorism. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, they're shooting rounds in the air, trying to disperse crowds using those same terrorist tactics that they use over here in the U.S. to disperse crowds. They fire in the air or they put gunfire on a loudspeaker to make people believe that they're actually shooting in the crowds. I mean, that's how jacked up we are. People are fleeing Afghanistan. Meanwhile, we just keep the we keep continuing this American imperialist, you know, propaganda machine. And they, they tug at the heartstrings to make you really feel like we, we have to be there. We have to do something. That's why the Syria story was so it's like we just the, the, the Syrian children are dying of gas. The Assad gases on people. We have to do something. To our own detriment. 
we got to keep pushing against this, folks. We got to keep pushing against the mainstream media. We got to keep pushing against the shit libs and alternative, so-called alternative media. We got to keep pushing against people who prop this kind of stuff up. Nonstop death, imperialism, and war. Enough is enough, folks. It's literally making me sick to my stomach. We need to stay out of all these countries. We have no business being there. We need to stay here in our own country. And if somebody comes over here messing with us, then yeah, we need to go ahead and take care of it. But as far as us being in every other country in the world, delegating and and drone striking and spreading democracy, yeah, cut all that out. Time's up. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below, folks. I'm done with this. Like this video, share, and subscribe. Remember, love, peace, and light. Until next time, do something kind. Rewind. I'll catch you guys on the next video, all right? All my info down below.